Hello everyone, this is Ramani. I'm working as Assistant Professor of Chemistry in Nala Nansimharati Group of Institution. Today our topic is Water Softening Methods. Okay, what is water softening method? We, by using this method, we remove hardness producing salts from the water. And it is done by two ways, internal treatment method and external treatment method. First discuss about what is internal treatment method. In the internal treatment method, we remove all the hardness producing salts from the water after feeding water into the boiler for steam generation. Okay, and this is done by three ways. One is Calgon conditioning, passpate conditioning, and colloidal conditioning. Let's see what is first Calgon conditioning. The Calgon condition is that the treatment of boiler water with the Calgon is also called sodium hexameta passpate. The Calgon we can also call sodium hexameta passpate, and this form a soluble complex with calcium sulfate. Okay, so when this sodium hexameta passpate reacts with calcium sulfate and form a soluble complex ion. Okay, like this, we can remove all the calcium containing salts from the water with the help of calagon. Okay, this is the calagon conditioning process. Next, what is passpate conditioning? In the passpate conditioning, magnesium hydroxide scale can be removed by adding appropriate sodium passpate. Okay, this passpate reacts with calcium and magnesium salts and forming loose sludge of calcium or magnesium passpate, which can be removed by blow down process. Okay, when this sodium passpate re reacts with the magnesium or calcium salts, form magnesium passpate and calcium passpate. These are we can easily remove by blow down process. Okay, this process is called passpate conditioning. Next, what is colloidal conditioning? In the colloidal conditioning, we remove all the uh, hardness producing salts from the, uh, by adding agar agar or kerosene or another um, colloidal substances to the water and we can remove all these hardness producing salts, okay? And they form a uh, coating around scale forming particles and thus prevent them from aggregating together for, from scale. This method is effective in case of low pressure boilers. Next, what is external treatment method? In the external treatment method, we remove all the hardness producing salt from water before feeding the water into the boiler for steam generation. Okay, and especially in this method, we use ion exchange process. Okay, in the ion exchange process, by using ion exchange resins, we remove the, all the ions from the water. So this method we can also call deionization process or demineralization process. Okay, so in the ion exchange process, we, re, we, we use ion exchange resins. So what is resins? Resins are uh, cross-linked long chain organic polymers. Okay, what is the resins? Resins are cross-linked long chain organic polymers. Okay, in this method, we use two types of resins. One is cation exchange resin and another one is anion exchange resin. So first, what is cation exchange resin? This cation exchange resin have the capable of exchange their cations with other cations which comes to contact with them. Okay, they are represented like this RH. Okay, this cation exchange resins we can represent it like this. Okay, here R is the insoluble polymer matrix and H is the exchangeable ion. Okay, generally we use Umberlite IR 120 and Dovex 50 are commercially uh, remove all the ions from the water. Next, what is anion exchange resin? In the anion exchange resin, you have the capable of exchange its anion with other anion which come to their contact. Okay, and they are represented like this ROH. Here, R is the insoluble polymer matrix, and OH is the exchangeable ion. Generally, we use Umberlite 400 and Dovex 3 are commercially available 
uh, anion exchange resins okay next is, what is the process so how we remove these anions or cations from the water in this method okay let's see here in this diagram in this method we use two columns one is cation exchange column another one is anion exchange column okay in the cation exchange column it contains cation exchange resin okay in the anion exchange column it contain anion exchange resin so when we pass the water through the cation exchange column first so in the water the all the cations are removed by the cations from the cation exchange resin the same amount of cations are released from the cation exchange resin all the cations it takes from the water okay then finally we will get the cation removed water that is only the water contains h plus ions and anions okay after remove the, all the cations from the water only the water contains only the anions and also h plus ion which is released from cation exchange resin next this treated water next we passing through the cation exchange column okay anion exchange column in the anion exchange column it contain anion exchange resin this anion exchange resin exchange its anions with the anion which are present in the water what are the anions will be present in the water sulfides chlorides and nitrates okay these anions are exchanged by the anions of the anion exchange resin that is oh minus ion so after re, re, taking the all sulfides chlorides and nitrates from the water only the water contains h plus ions and also oh minus ions this h plus ions and oh minus ions are combined to each other and form water then finally we'll get demineralized water or deionized water let's see the reactions for the anion exchange resin and cation exchange resin here the first we'll see the reaction at cation exchange column in the cation exchange column it contain cation exchange resin that is we represent it like this rh and it exchange it, all the cations from the water those are cal calcium ions and magnesium ions okay this calcium and magnesium ions are replaced by h plus ions and it form r2ca and r2mg and it releases the two h plus ions into the water okay next in the anion exchange column the anion exchange resin we represent like this roh and this anion exchange resin uh, replaces all the anions from the water those are chlorides sulfates and carbonates these chloride sulfates and carbonates are exchanged by oh minus ions okay and it form rcl r2so4 and r2co3 and next it also form oh minus into the water so what are the ions which is released from the cation those are h plus and ions which are released from the anion that is oh minus ion this h plus ions and oh minus ions are both are combined each other and form water okay then so in the final we'll get the ions removed water that is deionized water or demineralized water and after removing all the anions and cations from the water we'll get demineralized water and that water contains some dissolved gases that dissolved gases we can remove by by using deaerator in the deaerator we remove all the dissolved gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen uh, sorry nitrogen dioxide okay these are we can remove by the deaerator okay next regeneration what is regeneration after using the cation exchange resin and anion exchange resin for the removal of all cations and anions from the water the resin lost its capacity so that we can also call exhausted okay this exhausted cation exchange resin and anion exchange resin we can regenerate it by adding some chemicals those are acids and bases generally the cation exchange resins we can regenerate it by adding acids what is the acids acid releases the h plus ions okay when we uh, giving the acid to the an, uh, cation exchange resin it 
it gives the H plus ions to the cation exchange resin and it takes the all the calcium and magnesium ions from the water. Okay, next in the anion exchange resin. In the anion exchange resin, we can regenerate it by adding alkali. Okay, when we add this alkali to the anion exchange resin, it it gives the OH minus to the anion exchange resin and it takes the all the sulfates, chlorides, and nitrates from the water. Okay, and the salts are removed by washing with the distilled water. What are the salts which and which will get after adding these acids and alkali to the anion exchange resin and cation exchange resin that salts we can remove by adding some distilled water that we can remove by through the washings okay next what is the advantages and disadvantages for this ion exchange process let's see first what is the advantages in this process we'll get low residual hardness containing water that is about 2 ppm and this process can be used to soften highly acidic alkaline water and it removes the all the anion, anions and also cations from the water okay next what is the disadvantages of this process this process is very expensive especially the resins which we are using for the exchange the cations and anions these resins are very costly and Turbid water decreases the efficiency of the process. Okay, these are the disadvantage of ion exchange process.